Hello. I am so excited for what's about to happen. Prob probably too excited, actually. Hey guys, my name is David Prater. David, why are you in a hotel? Good question. Tomorrow morning, 7.30 a.m., I have a call time. I have to be on set for a movie so I can stand in the background for minimum wage for hours on end and then go home. I cannot be more ecstatic about that. I, like, for real, for real. I just love film sets. It's so cool to me. Production schedules are so wacky. 7.30 tomorrow was actually not the original time. Uh, the original one was 7 a.m. tomorrow. So I get to sleep a little bit longer. Actually, the original one is like a month ago. When I first got the little job, there was an injury in the cast. And they couldn't do anything about that, so they had to push back the schedule a month. And then the shoot was supposed to be on Monday and Tuesday. Now it's Friday and Saturday. Like, ah. It's wild stuff. I love it all. Anyway, I want to show you my setup. I want to show you what we've got going on the night before my first ever set shoot. I have two backpacks right there, right there. Probably a little bit excessive for one night. This is my location bag. This is what I want to take into the actual shoot if I can. It's got Steve Martin's Born Standing Up in case I get too bored on my phone or it dies. I've got a couple pairs of shoes, one black, one brown. And we've got belts to match each of them just in case I need different looks. And then a good fistful of pocket squares, nothing too crazy. And this bag, this is my actual like what I pack bag. I've got all my hair stuff there. I have my styling cream. I have my texture paste. I have my mousse. I've got the stuff for my face, my, my makeup, yeah. Some tinted moisturizer, an under eye roller, and a concealer stick. And the only reason I even bring that up is because if you're a guy and you feel more comfortable, more confident in yourself, in your own skin, if you're not as much in your own skin, go for it. Fake it till you make it, eh, that only gets you so far. Fake it until you believe in yourself. But wait, there's more. I also have the actual outfits that I have to wear. To figure out what to pack, the casting people sent over some pictures as well as some verbal descriptions of the shoot. They said to think Monte Carlo, like a hotel type of casino banquet thingy. And they said to bring three to four looks. So what do we have in here? I brought just a few ties. I don't need too many. I don't want to overwhelm myself. I brought actually one of my favorite business casual combos. It's a white Oxford with a gray sweater and then a navy blazer on top of it. It looks great with khakis as well as some charcoal slacks. Then I brought both of my dress shirts and both of my suits. I've got the black suit there with the blue stripey under it and I have the charcoal one there with the white dress shirt under that. And that's where I stand, that's what we have. Uh, I'll see you in the morning when I'm finally getting ready. I hope you have a, uh, a good night sleeping. I, I sure will try. Oh, good morning, good morning. 6.05 a.m. call time, an hour and a half. Let's do this. All right, looks good to me. Let's roll out. I'm running a couple minutes behind. I had to wait for my car to thaw. I hope they don't yell at me too loudly. And thank God they didn't yell at me too loudly at all. They didn't yell at me once. Wow. wow. I thought I was more rebellious than that. Everything happened yesterday, so I'm speaking a day later right now. And guys, like honestly, yesterday was one of the most incredible days of my entire life. I don't even know where to begin. I don't know where to start. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Okay, uh, thank you, darling. Let's do it. From the time that I got out of my car and into the building, which you just now saw, until the time that I left, I clocked out of that place, it was a 13-hour day. And to me, I don't know, it, it felt like 13 minutes. It was crazy. First, I go inside, I get checked in. Instantly, I start meeting new people, making new friends who are also working on the movie. Once I get checked in, I go up into wardrobe, I set out all of my outfits, all of my different looks on a chair. The woman in charge of costuming and wardrobing and everything like that comes in, checks out my different looks, and says, I want you to wear these things together. And I'm like, okay. And I don't know why I don't have a photo or a video of it, but it was a business casual look with the sweater and the jacket and everything like that. The khakis that I packed with that. But then instead of the white shirt, I wore the uh, blue stripy thing underneath the sweater. On the footies and on the waist, to have my brown shoes and my brown belt. You know, because khakis. So I leave wardrobe and we were filming in a church, so I go into the sanctuary of the church because that was the extra holding room. And I start meeting new people some more, specifically this one guy. He just now started YouTube stuff and I look forward to collaborating with him in the future. 
And then we get in line, we get into uh, hair and makeup, which is just them taking cheap hairspray and going, you're good. And as I'm standing in line, a woman is coming around and passing stuff out. I'm like, what is that? And she says, everybody, take a pair of earbuds. It's going to be gunfire on set today. What? Wow. I, I picked an awesome day. So all of that stuff happened in like two hours, from 7.30 to 9.30-ish. And then a guy comes in and he says, hey, everybody, I am the AD, the uh, assistant director. And he says, imagine, if you will, and then he begins to paint the scene, which I'm not going to do for you. I'm going to give you the basics of this entire day without doing anything to hurt the production. But he said, remember, this is a formal type of thing. So some of you might be sitting down and eating. Some of you might be dancing. And I'm thinking, oh God, uh, let me sit, please. And he's like, remember guys, you are not extras. You are actors that don't speak. And I'm here like, oh, do go on. I should, that, that's a joke. I don't want you to think anything about that. And then somebody else comes in and he points at a girl and says, you stand over there. And then he points right at me and he's like, you join her. And I'm like, oh God, I am in trouble. This is not good. I don't like this. And then he did the same thing to three other pairs of people and he said, you eight people are dancers in the scene. Oh, ah. okay. That's, yeah, never say no. But at the same time, I'm like, this, this could be cool. This could be uh, like good for the scene. I don't know. I don't know. I know for sure that I don't deserve to be doing this. That's uh, like, I, I understand how fluky this is. And then he said, okay, we're going to take you to the set now. You have to be very quiet though. Uh, photography people and the director are talking. They're figuring out the scene. And I'm like, oh, okay. I, yeah, I'll be real. I'll, you won't even hear me. I'll change shoes. I won't clock around anymore. And then we go on to the set and oh my God. Gosh, oh, oh, it was okay if we took photo or video or whatever, but we we're not supposed to share it publicly. So I cannot show you any of that. And it's real sad. It's really unfortunate. A true bummer, a real bum bum. But it was beautiful. It was exactly what I expect. No, it exceeded every one of my expectations, actually. And from there we shot the scene, which again, I'm not gonna tell you specifically about. You do know that it's fancy and you know that there's gunfire. Those are the two things you know. But it was all so laid back. It was all so comfortable. Holy crap, I could not. Wow. People told me that they had never been on a set so relaxed before. A lot of these people had never been around the cast or crew that were just so easy to get along with. I truly was fortunate to have had my first experience of this capacity to be in such an awesome environment. It was one scene we shot all day long. It was the same scene over and over again. The first angle that they wanted for this scene took like three or four hours to get. It was awesome. Ah, I cannot, oh, I can't even put it to words how I feel just thinking about it. And it's sad because some of the faces you see around you just start to melt throughout the day. It's like, oh, I didn't know I had to be here this long. They say, I didn't really sign up for this. I'm like, yeah, 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 yes, you did. You should be as smiley as I am right now because this is ecstatic making. Holy crap. And after each take, rather than going back and resetting, the cast would just come out and talk to us. Like everybody was super chill. One of my favorite people I got to meet and hang out with a little bit was uh, Diego Beneda. You might recognize Diego from things like like Rock of Ages or 90210 or Scream Queens. I'm here with Diego Beneda. What would you say is like your number one piece of life advice for anybody that you picked up over the past you know, 26 years? I'd say number one, find your passion. Find what you love and once you find it, just, just keep on going, don't give up. Live, die for it, do whatever you have to do to achieve whatever you want and just persevere. <laughs> Fantastic. I couldn't have said it better myself. I'll stop name dropping there, but at the end of the day, 13 hours with these people and they made it so comfortable for us to be there with them. And after all of that time, it was a wrap. We were done. I went back to the room, changed out of everything, got on everybody's Instagram and Snapchat game. Then I got to drive home in the rain with the biggest smile on my face. It was incredible. For me, it was one of the most confirming experiences of my entire life. Before, I would say things like, oh, I could totally live on a film or TV set and it would be awesome. It would just be incredible. But I would always say it kind of like out of my ass. I don't know. I'd, I'd never even been on one. This experience showed me that I can at least do it for one day and be as excited, if not more excited, after the experience is over than before the day began. I'm serious, guys. It was way too much fun to be in that environment. And based on that, I really, really look forward to building a career in the industry. Of course, I'm going to document every single bit of it along the way. You're going to be a part of it if you'd like to. I know you know that I'm excited and I, I hope I could keep you excited too. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button that lets me know that you liked the video. If you're at all interested or intrigued to see the continuation in this industry through my lens, please go ahead, hit the subscribe button. It's going to be a ride for the next few years. Also, again, I want to touch on this real quick before I actually start the series. If you are a, a college student or an incoming college freshman, go ahead in the comments down below or on the other video. Leave me some comments and tell me what it is you're most concerned about or what your biggest questions are in going to or continuing college. And finally, let me know down in the comments. I've asked this before. 
but based on my definition of passion. What is yours? Which mutually beneficial activity, meaning it affects you and another person equally, or maybe, you know, even them more so than you, which activity like that excites you the most? I want to know because I shared one of mine today with you. Leave everything from that in the comments down below and with all of this, ah, I'm gonna go. So yeah. Ah, hmm, hmm, hmm. Bye.